Okay, over here uh, in lab, I've got a couple of temperature probes uh, in different lab quest units hooked up. And uh, one's reading 40.7 and one's, one's reading 41.7. So they're about a degree off. But what we're going to be more interested in is the changes in temperature that occur with those. So sometimes finding two temperature probes that are an exact match is not as tricky. Or, or is tricky and not uh, always that important. It's the delta T that's, <clears throat> that's more important. Uh, the boiling water over here we're going to use later. Uh, this is warm tap water that I got, but what I, I've got two beakers because I want to split this uh, evenly. So I'm going to pour about half of it into here. And let's uh, even that out. All right, they're pretty even. One of these is going to be a control uh, out here. <clears throat> and so I'll go ahead and set this one up out here to kind of monitor a natural rate of cooling. All right, so this one's going to go inside of the bell jar, the whole assembly. I, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and start data collection right now. We're, gonna, we're not going to now take the bell jar and put this over the top of everything. Get that string tucked in. All right, let's turn on the vacuum pump. I'm going to close the valve underneath here. Turn this on. And so as the vacuum pump operates, it is removing air from this, this chamber here. The, the distortion's pretty bad there, but uh, can't do anything about that. That's the... That's the less than perfect uh, optical quality of our bell jar. So temperature is 38 point something. Over here, by the way, we are at uh, 35.8. That's weird. I, I, I don't know why that one's cooling faster. Okay, so we're getting bubbles out coming out right now. These bubbles are likely air bubbles. I don't know. The air bubble, there we go. We're starting to get some significant uh, rolling, kind of a rolling boil here. Notice the condensation around the inside of the uh, beaker. Okay, now it's already forming on the inside of the. So now it's definitely boiling, because we're getting a lot of moisture in the air. The original bubbles might have just been air bubbles coming out of solution. Check the camera in the upper left-hand corner. We're at 36.5, 36.4, 2, 1. So in this process of boiling, we're kind of climbing down. In fact, let me um, switch this view to the monitor. I mean, to the... There we go. So this one's sitting here at 35.4, the one that's sitting out in the room. And this one, 32.0. We're still seeing it. That's good. <laughs> it's foggy, but uh, we're still seeing it. So notice that not only are we getting water to boil at a low temperature, but as we are boiling it, we're definitely creating a cooling effect. So that's kind of, you know, it's kind of opposite of what we might expect when we boil water. But when you consider about the demonstration that we did in an earlier video, evaporative cooling, uh, when something evaporates, when something goes from the liquid phase to the gas phase, it's endothermic and therefore takes the highest energy molecules and they leave. They go somewhere else. And that's what's happening here. The highest energy molecules are going somewhere else. They're going into the airspace above, and then they're getting pulled out by the vacuum pump and thrown into the room. So we're at 28.4. The boiling has kind of stopped. We're getting, we're getting some bubbles occasionally. This is kind of a vintage, we'll call it a vintage bell jar and vacuum pump assembly here. What I really mean is it's old and probably could, uh, could stand for some upgrading in terms of its seal. That rubber gasket, uh, down at the bottom, even the bell jar itself might have uh, some areas where air is able to creep back in um, and and not allow the pressure to get down as low as it might otherwise. We're at 27.7. If you can look here through the through the glass, 27.6. Where were we initially? I don't remember, but uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and and uh, cut this off, and then we'll compare the two temperature curves. So. Uh, power switch. I'll let some air back. But it lets the air in slowly, and as the air gets let in slowly, then I can cut. There we go. Lift this off. All 
And now we can uh, we can see there that we're at 27.3. So we, we dropped nearly 10, 10 degrees in the action of boiling. And if, if we, we take, take a look, look at what we have here, we were, I did, probably did the same thing here. We were initially up in that same area, but we're now sitting here at 34. So this is at 34 through natural cooling in the room. It's actually close to a hot plate, so that kind of maybe kept it a little warmer. But, uh, and this is at 27 over here. So anyway, so we had that boiling. Let me go grab the vapor pressure chart. And if we're down at 27, let's say 30 degrees Celsius, because we were still boiling around 30 degrees Celsius, that means that we had the that means that we had the atmospheric pressure. I mean, we had the external pressure all the way down to about 31.82 millimeters of mercury, or 0 0.04 atmospheres. So four down to four percent of what normal atmospheric pressure is is how far we dropped that inside of the bell jar. Anyway, kind of a neat little result. All right, I'm going to clear this uh, stuff out of the way, and I'll show you the one over here with the boiler. Okay, uh, so let's take a look here at uh, the hard bottle. I'll go ahead and uh, I'll turn the heat off in a moment. It's been boiling here for quite some time. I have distilled water in here, by the way, so that I don't get a bunch of uh, scale on the inside of my, uh, of my flask. So I've got a stopper back here that's going to be a nice snug fit on top. And while it's boiling, while it's heating, I want to put that stopper on. Now I'll take it off of the heat source. So the pressure doesn't build up. I'll turn off the heat and I'll give this a good firm twist so that it seal well. And then we're going to let it cool down for a while. I'm still waiting for this to cool, by the way, but uh, I, I, it's been about five or six minutes. Um, but I just wanted to, I, I'm walking by and I wanted you to notice that uh, this, is, this is still boiling. I'm going to go ahead and take it off of this towel so we can see it a little bit better. Um, just, just, um, I'm not even forcing any cooling. This is natural cooling and notice it continues to boil. So we're going to add some, we're going to flip this and add some ice to it, but I still want it to cool. So I'll be back in just a little bit and I'm going to carefully invert this. I like to always do this kind of carefully just, uh, um, all right. So I've got this little stand to help kind of keep it inverted. For all right. So what so we're going to do now, I've got ice here in this tray next to it and, uh, we're going to put some ice up in this little. Uh, this is why it's a specialized flask, this Cincinnati Form Franklin flask. Uh, we're going to put some ice up here in that little concave bowl shape up here. So this is, of course, going to start cooling. I'll just start with one ice cube, kind of keep it slow, and we'll add some more as it, as it goes. There we go. Look at that. We get some nice boiling action. In fact, let me uh, tilt this down. There we go. Look from the bottom right there. So our temperature is around 68 which means on our vapor pressure table, the intern the pressure above the liquid right now is about 0.28 atmospheres, right? So, and remember we were, it was sitting on that hot plate over there for quite some time. I mean, even before I started that first demonstration and through that whole first demonstration. And so most of the air had been driven over on the hot plate. Most of that air had been driven out and it was mostly filled in that space above the liquid, but contained within the flask, mostly filled with steam, with water vapor molecules. That's what, so when I capped it, when I put the stopper on while it was still on the hot plate, while it was still boiling, right up to the end there, that means we had very little air in there. So most of what's in this headspace up here is water vapor. And as I add the ice cube up top, I'll go ahead and put another one up here. And as I add the ice cube, it, uh, uh, it causes, you can see the condensation dripping in from underneath the bowl. It causes some of that water vapor to condense, which means there's even less pressure. And because there's less pressure, it's going to boil again. And uh, we get some really impressive, I, th I really think it's a pretty neat little demonstration of boiling and a, and a cleaner one. It's also quiet, right? The vacuum pump's not cranking away. Of course, I'm blabbing away. We're at 58 now on the outside of the flask. 50, uh, 57 down here.
Now I can also uh, take a couple of these ice cubes and kind of encourage even more condensation around the outside because this flask is still warm so I can kind of help cool it. There you go. All right, I think I'll cut that one off. I have a